welcome to another episode of the Do Good Podcast with myself, Rob Watson. And I'll be going solo again in this episode like I did back on episode 7. Got some uh, nice feedback on that one. So I'm going to do this one again on my own and um, chat about a few things. And the theme of today's podcast is when you know better, you do better. So I'm going to be talking about my experience of how I've kind of like gone on my own sort of learning experience and and grown through that and then been able to apply that mainly through good habit building. So that's fundamentally is going to be what the podcast is going to be like. But before getting into it, I just wanted to talk about some good things that I believe is going on in the world and has been happening since last time that I found out about yeah, something that I came across, I watched an amazing video this morning on Marianne Williamson, who is running for president in 2020. And I think it's just a really amazing sign, an empowering sign to see that someone like this is willing to step up and to find the voice and to be like, you know what, I am going to stand for president. I am going to show there's better ways to do stuff. Now, anyone who doesn't know Marianne, she's a spiritual teacher on many levels, but she's also just, she's an amazing human being who's got so much experience, so much knowledge. She works closely with her cartel, who is an amazing guy. So having people like that who are gonna be stepping up to be in this space as a potential, will she win? I don't know, it's a big machine. The political system, uh, very much led by money and power and corporations, so we shall see what happens. But just the fact that she's willing, she's gonna stand, then I believe it's an amazing sign that someone who's like very much heart-centered is going to be putting themselves in a position to potentially affect change. And even if she didn't get in, imagine the people that she's going to inspire along the way who then might become president or might get in the office or might become whoever, an MP over here or a politician, whatever it may be, or to, to develop a product or business which is going to serve the collective make things better in some way so i really think it's exciting i'll put a link to it it's about 40 minutes long it's basically her talking and announcing herself to be she's running for president and i'm telling you i got so excited and got such a buzz listening to it it's just like yes you know let's get behind people like this i think it could be incredible it really could and i know everyone's like up in arms about trump and brexit but I think one thing that comes from these things, from these challenging times, is particularly from, say, in America, with Marianne running for president, is through Trump being there, through us all seeing the flaws of the system and seeing how he is, I believe it's inspiring more people to step up, to find out, find their own voice, to believe that they need to be a part of the solution and how we can do it together and we can't just sit on the sidelines anymore. So I think it's a really positive sign. And there's been other signs as well. I think it was in the midterms. There was the first Native American people got elected to Congress, I think, or maybe to the Senate. I might, well, it's one of them things anyway. That is, um, that's a really good sign that things are changing, things are shifting. So we shall see. And then onto some other things that have happened. So I was just having a little look at a positive news article. Um, everyone might remember uh, my interview with Lucy Purdy back in episode two. And on their site, they just talked about some of the things that really went right last year. So I think it's worth just you know touching on a few of them now. And the ones I'm going to mention is sort of got a bit of a, an environmental twist on it. So in Colombia, I believe they're going to be creating the world's largest tropical rainforest national park. Now that's pretty impressive, isn't it? I think it's going to be increased from 5,800 square miles to a whopping 17,000 square miles. And that's pretty impressive. What else have we got on this list? In Pakistan, uh, they've pledged to plant 10 billion trees. I'll just say that again, 10 billion trees to help uh, combat climate change. And they're looking to do that over the next five years. I think looking to restore something like 350,000 hectares of forest. Now that is really impressive. And then another thing here in the UK, um, a label has been launched to help shoppers swerve plastic packaging. It's become a very a big thing over here. A lot of positive things have happened as well a few years they started charging 5p for a plastic bag attacks on that and that sort of like i don't know i think maybe 90 percent drop in the use of them maybe even more something like billions less are getting used so that's a really good thing and now the big thing is now around plastic free packaging because you know everything you get fruit vegetables whatever it may all tend to be wrapped in cellophane and non-recyclable plastic so the more that we can do that the better and then another thing which isn't on this article but want to touch about which i heard in norway 
something like they recycle 97% of their plastics and they actually have a post approach which isn't necessarily to stop using plastic it's just like we will not create anymore we've got enough here now we've got a great system in place where we're able to recycle like what's say 97% so they're okay using plastic it's just let's not create anymore because they don't want it to end up in landfill or they don't want it to end up out in the ocean so anyway that's my little bits of good news that I just wanted to share at the beginning of this podcast um, before we get going into this one, giving a thank you to Jason Mayo who featured the Dougal podcast in an article on his Medium. He included us alongside three other podcasts that he uh, really enjoys. So that was um, I, I got a real buzz when I when I saw that. Appreciate that. So thanks, Jason, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Okay, then. So on with the subject of today's podcast, which is all about when you know better you do better and the, th- the theme of this is very much about self-learning and how through our own desire to grow and to learn that we can empower ourselves to basically become better version of ourselves you know how can we do that and I, I think about it in terms of learning myself and I've gone on I'm what 38 going 39 I'll be 39 soon for the last 10 years I have absorbed so much information and empowered myself with so much self-knowledge more than at any time in my life where, you know, generally we are led to believe that the school system and going through school is when we learn the most. Um, I have got to say I do not agree with that, not under the current way we teach our kids and, and the way I was taught. I think about my own experience and the things that I was passionate about that I enjoyed. I enjoyed very few actual lessons. I enjoyed art, maths, and uh, woodwork, and that's pretty much it. I was not good at the other subjects, and it was painful at times, and I just felt I struggled. And, you know, also a lot of the stuff that I actually got taught was just has had absolute zero impact on my life. You know, some of the stuff getting taught about what Henry VIII and his wives and the history of that sort of stuff, and I'm like... For me, what is that actually going to be doing for the kids? What did that do for me? Did it empower me? Did it give me any great skills to go out there? So I think this is just one I want to talk on. You know, I want to talk about how we can empower ourselves now because I think that's the best, for me, the best education, self-education. But we can look at changing the school system and better ways to do it. It's it's popping up here in places and we know that a lot of um, parents are getting frustrated now with how the kids are being taught, all the tests and the stress and the pressure that we're putting on the kids. So I think, you know, we've got an opportunity now to really change stuff. Um, A lot of people, you know, spoke to Dina and Neil a few episodes back about how they homeschool their child and and the the effect that they've seen that and how she's turned into, you know, very secure, fun, playful, intelligent girl without being in the system so you know imagine just imagine if we had a school system which was you know really taught kids that what they really need to know stuff about like imagine developing life skills like proper stuff that you can need when you go out i think we've all heard of stuff and a lot of people can relate to this people can do really well at school be very good academically go to university get themselves a good degree as soon as they finish that and you know i'm using for commas here go out into the real world they often struggle because they've been so used to just following the rules or being told what to do and just found this very narrow way of being that when they get out into the world, they struggle when they're out there because what life skills have they actually been taught? Most of the, well, not most, but a lot of people who've done really well, people like Richard Branson and other amazing entrepreneurs flunked out of school, fell out the school system. They couldn't you know some of them would either be dyslexic or whatever some of these kids are some of the most creative powerful minds that we've got yet in the school system it just does not work for them so imagine if we start to teach kids like i said life skills teach them how to cook how to grow food all about nutrition imagine them three things if we did that cook grow food nutrition imagine the impact that's going to have on people's health for the rest of their lives imagine the effect it's going to have on the healthcare system, how how pe- less people will be getting sick. If we empower them from such a young age, not just send them, feed them whatever information we need to, and then at lunchtime, they're getting some crap dinners. 
I think we really need to rewrite and rethink about it. I know Jamie Oliver's been big on this over years, really trying to encourage schools to have real food for kids. We want these kids to grow up and to and to be strong adults and have an effect on the world and feel great. Well, you know, what we put inside us has a huge impact as that as well. And when I mean just food, I mean everything that comes in. As well as that, imagine if we taught kids about emotional health, you know, taught them how to deal with conflict. How many people in school, basically when you're in school, something that's interesting that I think about at times is you're learning on your own, aren't you? You're very much like you do your tests on your own. It's very much competing against the other, who's the better, who's the worst, whatever. Everyone gets graded an A down to E or D or F or whatever. I got a few Fs in my time. But how many times do you have people working as teams and groups? Because when you go out into the real world, like for instance, my experience, We've got to collaborate. We've got to work as teams. We've got to know how to interact with people, how to plan, how to organize, how to develop, how to grow, all them things. Yet you do not get taught that in school. It's very much like sit down, listen, write this down, and then go do a test at the end of the day and whatever. How beneficial is that for kids? Hey, how truly, how beneficial is it? Why can't we start teaching them some life skills? And also the thing is, you know, most parents now, both parents work. So some of them will be struggling to like maybe grow their own food or cook or whatever and be making, you know, some of the food might not be the most nutritious. So if we can start teaching the kids these things that may be lacking, some of that stuff can come through. So that's my two pennies worth about the school system and how it's going to can change. Now, the teachers around the country are phenomenal, Okay. I'm not like this in any of the schools or the teachers and stuff. But what I'm saying is the system, I believe system needs to change. The world, what's the world going to look like in 10, 20, 30 years time? Who knows? But one thing is we need to be creating kids. We need to empower kids. We need to imagine giving them more like the entrepreneurial spirit to like inspire and empower them to become better version of themselves, to really build them up, make them believe in themselves. All them things, you know, that would... It's only going to make things better. Hey, what do you think is going to make things better? So anyway, there's my two pennies worth about the school system. I don't want to go into that too much. I think I've sort of touched on it. I was actually in, I got interviewed by Ben Talon for his Arrest or Main Mix podcast. I'll put a link to that here. And that was um, really interesting. And I talked about a few things about the school system and how introducing more play. But anyway... On to the main thing that I want to talk about is, which is when you know better, you do better, which is very much all about empowering ourselves and and learning and absorbing as much information as ourselves. Like I said, for the last 10 years, I've been on an incredible journey myself of real self-education, absorbing as much knowledge and information as I can about the things that interest me very much around business, definitely you know, around productivity, all things, how I can become better at what I do in my job, but also much further afield and delve into stuff like how does the world work who runs the world what's really going on really sort of like peeling the layers of the onion back to get a greater understanding which then empowers me so i can make more informed choices so rather than me just say i don't know pick up a newspaper or switch on the news or whatever it is and get my information that way and just take that as truth instead i'm moving away from that and i've been looking at some alternative sources of news which is fascinating for me to see the different side of it and to see maybe sort of some true independent journalism rather than stuff which is kind of not so let's just say that it's also in health and well-being as well and self-development and whatever it can i just got really excited about the things and so for about the past 10 11 12 years i've been picking up books and reading books and that's another thing when i was younger i did not read i didn't like to read i never was really like, you know, some people, whatever, kids or whatever, might be really into the Harry Potter books or whatever that might be, Lord of the Ring books and all that sort of stuff. And that just wasn't me. I was not someone who would pick up a book and, and read just for the joy of it. It wasn't really until I got into my, like, mid-20s that I got interested in it. Um, my wife, Ruth, is, like, an avid reader. So I think, you know, in many ways, some of that's rubbed off on me, and, and she kind of encouraged that. And I picked up a few books, and then that was it. That was me away. Um, but I was never really into sort of reading too much about just stories and whatever that may be, whether it's the Harry Potter books or whatever. I was more into sort of knowledge and truth and all that sort of how I can potentially improve my life. 
you want to call it the self-help movement that's cool i'm all i'm all for self-help and self-improvement because i believe the better that we are as human beings then the better that we're going to be in the world and the better that we're going to be outside with our friends and our family and our society because we are we're more informed we feel more intelligent that's the thing you know in terms of i believe my intelligence has really increased the past 10 years i just feel so much more switched on and aware of things just like little light bulbs like pinging all the time and that's just like for me that's amazing when i think back sometimes like back in my 20s or whatever i didn't really have that and maybe just because i'm so excited about it and i'm really passionate about it well, anyway, the first book that I picked up, it must have been about 2008, 2009, was a Dale Carnegie book. And that was like how to stop worrying and to start living. Around that time, I was super stressed with the way I was working. I'd been running my business for two, three years. And it was 24-7 in terms of my mind was switched on 24-7. Always thinking about work and always thinking about this and thinking about that. And what things we had going on and staff issues or cash flow challenges or new business or whatever that might be it kind of like just swirled up in me so this book came to me and i think that's going to be the case you know with a lot of books they can just come to you at exactly the right time I remember one time I was going into waterstones and just out of the blue just this one book was it was almost like there was just a spotlight on it and i was like ah okay i'll get that i literally walked in seen it picked it up got it and left but that wasn't this book, that was a different book. But this one, Dale Carnegie, How to Stop uh, Worrying and Start Living, really had um, an impact on me because it started to talk about other people's experiences of how they were able to sort of like transform them, transform their lives and look at different perspective of things and realise that, you know, I think often what can happen in this world is we can think that our problems, our challenges, our issues, that there's only us going through them and what i've come to realize is that's not the case so many of us have got um so many issues and so many challenges to overcome and challenges are great because you know we can face them and we can grow from them yeah i think we all most of us will put out a certain perception to the world of what our life is like and particularly social media is playing a huge role in that even though there's a movement against that now in some ways about people being more open and honest and vulnerable about the feelings because I think it's best if we can just talk more about how we're feeling and what's going on in our lives. Okay, you know, don't moan. Don't just like look for self-pity or, I mean, don't have self-pity and don't be looking for, well, for this is my response anyway. I don't want to be putting stuff out because I want sort of attention and stuff like that. But I think it can be really helpful to share some experiences. And that's what I'm going to be doing more with this podcast and other things that I believe that by us sharing our experiences, we can help others. We can help others realize that all oh, right okay i i can, i've gone through something like that as well i can i can relate to that i can yeah i didn't realize that i know these little things that i think can help people like i spoke to someone recently and really opened up and talking about stuff and it feels really good to open up and this is sort of ties into this emotional health side of things imagine if we were teaching more kids about emotional health and and to express their feelings and their emotions and how a huge impact that could have on people growing up I think it could have such an impact to really be helping kids and and everyone really just to talk more. You know, I think some like suicides in this country, like the biggest killer of guys under 40 in this country is suicide. Now that's shocking, isn't it? You know, my feelings are that are huge about is that emotional health. Imagine if such from such a young age that we helped people to express their emotions, to help them overcome some trauma, whatever that might be, make them realise that they're not alone, that they can talk about stuff. Well, anyway, this all tied into this book, How to Stop Worrying and to Start Living. And it really helped me realise that other people have, have faced some really significant challenges and also much bigger challenges that I'm going through. So it kind of makes me feel like, well, if they can, they can overcome it, then I can overcome this. So that was very much my journey of reading books and just do my best to sort of just absorb as much information as I can and it was just like this wow it was so exciting and I would jump from all sorts of different thingies whether it be health and well-being I'm very much into sort of spiritual books and um all that kind of things and what all these books you know and particularly also around money and business I think you know who hasn't picked up a book 
or read an article about how to make more money or how to do this sort of stuff. So, you know, I went through all them things, but I kind of went them a bit of a, I don't know, I don't want to say an alternative way, but a different approach because I didn't just want to pick up whatever was getting recommended in, say, the Times money section or whatever it would be. I was kind of like looking into, say, uh, Robert Kawasaki, which is Rich Dad Poor Dad book, which is really fascinating. Uh, Tony Robbins, who is an incredible businessman, but also a phenomenal mo- motivational speaker with so many incredible strategies. So I was reading that book, Unleash the Power Within. I actually think I listened to that on uh, an audio book. And that's something that's really helped me over the years is listening. Like one thing for me is like, I'm a bit of a slow reader. I would, like I've heard some people who like will read a book in a day and I'm like, eh, that's not happening with me. You know, I'm like a, I go over things slowly and, and take a bit of time to absorb this information. And that's just sort of my approach. I hear some people who can, you know, speed read in classes and stuff like that. And that does interest me. Um, but I, that wasn't for me. Like I would, I basically read about a book a month. But I think sometimes that's it as well. Some, you, we don't have to absorb too much information too soon. Even though I, you, I think you go through spells in your life where it's just like, right, the floodgates open and it's almost like just absorb loads in. This is what comes to mind now when I think about it. Who remembers Neo in the Matrix? And he's just been, he's taken the pill and he's sort of woken up and he's realised that he was just born as a slave to the um, the robots and all that sort of stuff. But remember when he is basically getting his training and he's getting like, uh, programmed and downloaded and all these downloads are going in like how we can learn jujitsu and you can work all this sort of stuff but that's often how i think about when you get into some really great books or some podcasts or you go to some events or whatever it is it's just like this huge download and you almost leave a different version of you a better version of you because all of a sudden in a way you're transformed i do believe that some books can truly transform you some events can transform you some audio books some podcasts can transform you so yeah audiobooks can be amazing because i was a slow reader i would use uh, audible and i get a, a subscription with them and i would order you know do a book each month or a couple of books each month and it was great for me when i was driving to work or i was going to meetings or just wherever or even going out for a walk i just listen to some audiobooks and it's a great way i think one that i really enjoyed the other year was elon musk's autobiography it's about 13 hours and i think i went through that in about three days now i wouldn't have read that book personally on my own in three days but i think whether you're working at your desk or whatever you can um I, I'm fortunate, I think a lot of people are in this situation as well, potentially a lot of people who are reading this might have um, jobs where they work on computers where they don't have to be active and so much, so they can just listen to this podcast, they can listen to audio books, whatever that might be. Actually, the funniest thing is, not the funniest thing, one thing to mention, right back about 20, 2005, my, a good friend that I used to work with, a Shane, he passed on this book to me called The Richest Man in Babylon by George S. Classen and I listened to that on an audio book and I absolutely loved it and it's just this journey of this man and all these little antidotes and stories and tips and hints about how this guy becomes the richest man in Babylon and it ties into a little bit of something that I heard in the minimalist recent podcast Millionaires that is surprising most people who think like they're millionaires that they must be I don't know um they must be doctors or um accountants or you know work in the city or work in hedge funds or a ceos well actually it's really interesting that that isn't the case like in america the third i think it has yeah the, th- the third most millionaires are actually teachers now let's think about that how many teachers would earn in this country over 30 40 thousand a year they wouldn't but these are some of the people who are being very astute with the savings with the money and basically investing and and doing things wisely so this book the richest man in babylon really had a massive impact on me this is going back to when i was 24 i had a few issues going for university with money basically i didn't have any because i was at uni i didn't have a job but i took store cards and credit cards out and overdrafts and managed to get myself into um, a little bit of a little bit of a mess with cash back then so once I got a job, I was able to think about it more wisely and pay off my debt and back then. But this book, The Richest Man in Babylon, really helped me in terms of like starting to like save and plan. Do you remember a lot of people would be, you know, have that idea of earn more, spend more? But actually, no, you just, because you're earning more, you're choosing to spend more. 
if your salary goes up 20%, you don't need to spend an extra 20% on a higher rent or a more fancy car. Imagine if you save that money instead. Well, anyway, the, one of the core principles of the richest man in Babylon is you save 10% of your income every single month and that's yours to keep and just keep saving it over and over and over. And I've pretty much done that since I was 24. At some months, I was able to build that up to 30, 40, even 50% a month to save and just keep building cash. And that feels really good, really empowering for me because I heard some statistics, like so many people are just a couple of paychecks or a paycheck away from sort of like having nothing. And I think, what a way to live. Like so much, like on the edge, that just... That, I didn't want to go down that route. I didn't want to live like that. So I've sort of, through the empowering things in this book and some of these stories and way to be, and it's a beautiful book. It's so well delivered. So I'll put a tip into that. I don't want to talk about all the books that I've read and stuff, but but anyway, that's really helped me in my self-development. So if I would sort of read a book a month or listen to an audio book, a couple of them a month, you know, that can be like 30 books a year. That's amazing, and I've you know I've pretty much been doing that now for the past five or ten years or whatever. That's like three hundred books of like knowledge that I'm absorbing, and some of the books you know they can be fine, they can just be quite enjoyable, but other ones you can really get a lot from them, and they can really like I say I think you can transform yourself from the power of a good book, and then what other things have I done to sort of to know better in myself and to do stuff. And I think going to events, going to workshops and going to events can can really have a massive shift, much more significantly. Now I'm just gonna talk about one of my experiences. Now, I heard about Tony Robbins, must have been about 2012, 2013, started watching some of his clips on YouTube and I bought, got his audio book, Unleash the Power of Him. He's got an amazing way about him. And he very much teaches you and empowers you through the power of story. Because I think when anyone ever tells you a story, you can be more engaged because I think we start to visualize that and go on them journeys. And he puts in some very wise words in all these stories. But it's not just about stories. It's very much, it's bigger than that. But he creates this whole package. So I got into his books and then I always wanted to go to one of his events. I heard his events were like amazing. So he does this event called Unleash the Power of In, same as the book. And it was down in London. And this was, I think it was like about um, March, April time in 2015. Me and Ruth went down there and did four days in London. And it was absolutely phenomenal. We didn't know what to expect. I don't think... I won't even be able to do it justice talking about it because it's just, yeah, it's one of them you have to experience it to know it, to believe it, to understand it. But we got there and there were seven and a half thousand other people all around us. All came here to be a part of this event, this transformational event. And I've got to say, like, I have not laughed, cried, or danced as much in my entire life during them four days. You, you just. You release so much, you feel so empowered, you laugh, you're dancing, you're crying. It's phenomenal. The first night we did a fire walk. And the premise of that is that you're during that day, you're sort of like journaling and you're writing and you're sort of getting thoughts out of your head, things that may have been trapped there for years. And you're thinking about what limiting beliefs that may have stopped you or preventing you in your life from whatever it's taking that next step, or it could be in business or in your relationship or in your life or your health, whatever it is. And you're writing it down. And then we all lined up. We all went outside, all seven and a half thousand of us. And we walked on fire. We walked on hot coals and we went along. It must've been about 10 meters and the reason you do that because let's be honest if you can walk on fire you can do pretty much anything can't fly but we can pretty much do anything once we walk on fire so then beliefs that we had that we didn't believe in ourselves because someone said something to us when we were a kid growing up or whatever that may be has enabled us by doing that we've kind of let it go and you do it's it's phenomenal i i feel like i let a huge amount go that event to the point that when i got home i got the flu i was in bed for almost 10 days after it because i believe i like it was so transformational for me this was then my body releasing out a load of old stuff because come on let's be honest after you've had the flu it's not nice but you feel great after the flu you almost feel like you've been reset and i think that's what this event did to me it reset me it rebooted me it was very much like the neo experience of just feeling like i had all this information getting downloaded inside of me so 
you know, reading books and going to events. There's been other events that I've gone to as well. I'm very much into like meditation and I would go to a weekly meditation class. Just, I would find that would just help to like calm me down and to switch off, especially if you'd had like a quite a, a full day in work to be able to go do that. Just something just to take the charge out of me and stuff like that. And then also away from say audio books, events and stuff like documentaries as well. I've had a really impact on me over the years and I must have watched dozens and dozens. I get really excited about them. I won't mention any here now, but I think, you know, most people who'll be listening to that will be um, quite empowered by that. But one thing I will include is in the show notes is this is something that helped me was for, for entrepreneurs was like these 10 powerful books that, are su- that all successful uh, entrepreneurs should have on the bookshelf. I've not got all 10, but I've got about three or four of them. And some of them include the ones that I've mentioned in here. So I'll put a link to that in case anyone wants to check that out. Because I really do believe that you know, we're living in this time now, there's so much opportunity, but there's already so many issues and so many challenges that we've got to overcome. So the more of us that can take it upon ourselves to learn more, to grow more, to then do better, because I believe that's what happens, you know, if you've only got a limited bandwidth of, of information, then you can only do so much with it. But once you've got more, you can make more better informed choices about yourself. You can also, I believe, make more conscious choices because I think that's one thing that's really helped me on my journey is finding out about the planet and animals around the world and, and what we're doing to the planet and all this kind of stuff. And it's made me very, very passionate about the planet and doing what I can and to follow some of the movements that are going on there to live better, to do better. That's why I had Dina and Neil on a few episodes ago about how we can all use our own patches. Of course, we need bigger change to go on. And I think that, that I believe that can happen and we can be involved in that, but it has to start with us. It doesn't end with us, but it has to start with us in our spaces. So do what we can. So all this stuff I get in, I just get really excited about it. And I find this as well as I've gone on this journey, I end up then just naturally start switching off from some of the stuff that I think becomes toxic in our lives. I think a lot of us can relate to whether whether it be toxic relationships, toxic environments, things that just aren't serving us, things that put us on a bit of a downer. Now, I was like that. That was me at one point. I was probably a, I was, I was a toxic person and I would get involved in, in certain ways of being and living. And that's just, that's okay. You know, that's life. That's how we learn. That's how we grow. And um, so I don't want to be judging people now who are still like that, but I'm just saying we can probably all relate to times with that. Maybe like I think as I become more aware and start to wake up to things and um, become more conscious, you then start to make better choices. So that's something that's helped me is kind of spending maybe less time with in some environments that don't really make me feel good i'll talk about some of this in some other episodes but that's it and i think as we grow more and learn more we be then which i think is a really key thing we begin to question more i think it's really important that we start to question the status quo that's something that the more of us can question the way things are, the way it's going to get better. Like, here's the thing that comes to mind. Think about, you know, kids and when we're young. Don't kids question absolutely everything? And I believe on, on what it is, is on a very deeper level, they realise that a lot of the things that we do are a backwards way of approaching stuff, that we need to unlearn a lot of things and do it in a different way. But anyway, kids question a lot of stuff and kids will often say to the parent, well, why is it done that way, daddy or mummy or teacher? Why do we do it that way? And often the response from the parent or the teacher is like, well, that's the way we've always done it. Or that's just the way it is. Why? I don't believe that's the case. I think if that's the way things are, well, maybe there's a better way to do stuff. And as I've gone on my sort of like process of learning and growing and more, I then naturally start to question the way things are. I think surely we can do these things better. Politics. I touched on Marianne Williamson at the beginning. That's how we're going to change politics. The more we can question, the more we can feel empowered, the more we've got a chance of, you know, turning this around. Let's be honest. We live in very, very challenging times. And, you know, some people are even questioning whether we're going to make it, whether will we be around in a few hundred years or even less. Who who knows with the way the direction we're going on and 
we have to make some big changes and it has to happen from the top of course and the big corporations and government and policy and i believe it's happening i am very optimistic that we can we can come through all of this and we'll be better for it and we would have grown from it and we'll be grateful for the experience because that's the thing as well i often find in my life you know when you go through a challenging time you can be very as you're going through it you can be like why is this happening to me why have i and why have i had this health issue or why has this happened to me or whatever and but once you come through it you can realize that it's, it was actually the to serve you to make you better it wasn't like that like i had this heard this thing i think it's from audrey marcus and he talks about it that life doesn't happen to you it happens for you and i really believe that that life happens for us it's happening for a reason and we're going through all these challenges now and we're facing all this stuff now because we've got this opportunity to transform things, to grow and to make things better than what they were. So I believe questioning stuff is is key. And then the other thing I want to talk about is us should start to take action. And I believe us taking action through building some healthy habits because I think that's key, you know. As you start to absorb more information and you hear about some people that inspire you of whatever their morning routine may be or whatever uh, hacks or advice they've got in terms of in business or in your health or your life or relationships, the more we start to absorb that, it's just naturally that you'll just start to apply that stuff. Now, you can just absorb this information and life is the way it is, but for me, and I believe it is for the case of a lot of people, the more stuff we now absorb, you know, the better we can live. I used to have some terrible habits. One thing for me is like, this is going back 10 years or so, when I used to get in the drive to work, I would basically roll out of bed in the morning. I would put my clothes on, brush my teeth. I may have got a shower the night before or not, who knows. Drive to work, um, smoke a few cigarettes on the way, drink a couple of cans of Coke Zero, get into my desk, feeling like shit because I hadn't slept well that's one of the things when I talk about worrying too much and that book I'd have terrible sleep it's still challenging for me now my sleep it's definitely um something that's getting better it's certainly got better over time through a few things and lifestyle changes and all that but yeah and that's would be my day and then I'd be chasing the day just anxious and stressed I used to have this belief that being stressed and anxious I'd work better or be more creative and how I was so wrong for me anyway. So I found that through all the stuff that I've been doing the past 10 years, I've been applying some of them things into my life and I haven't totally overwhelmed myself and, and, and gone crazy on stuff as things like as big things have small beginnings. So if we can make small changes to our daily routine, we can then have a really big effect on ourselves. So for me, I packed in smoking a long time ago I don't drink Diet Coke or Coke Zero anymore. I've now shifted that to you know herbal teas or green juices in the morning or whatever that may be, because I believe that's something that's gonna feed me in the best possible way. It's gonna make me feel strong. It's gonna make me feel fit. This is something that comes to mind as well when we come to make choices in our life each day. And you know, we don't have to have these massive grand plans and to make, I'm gonna be this and that in six months. It's like, just what can we do today to make a difference to ourselves, to our lives? And something that really helps me is thinking, can I take some action today that my future self is gonna be thankful for? I find that to be, just think about that, you know, taking action now, your future version, whether it be in a week or six months or a year is going to be grateful for you making them choices making them changes uh, today that you do and like i say small steps small changes whatever it is that you want to be or whatever you want to change in your life we can do that so the more we can change our habits our daily habits that i think we've got control of fully i heard something else as well about habits you know habits are something that we do unconsciously once we become aware of them they're no longer a habit, they're a choice. So most of us are just making bad choices each day. They're not even bad habits. So now we're conscious of them and we're aware of them, we can start to swap them out. Something I heard as well, I think it's from James Clear, who was on uh, the Minimalist podcast, I'll put a link to that. He spoke about if you wanna change a habit, if you wanna make a shift, you wanna make a change, then start really small, like I said then, Big things have small beginnings, but say you wanna, I wanna start running. That's one of your things you wanna do. And you might wanna run a marathon. Well, 
you know, that's quite a leap if you've just been sat on the couch or you're not in a great shape fitness wise. And his thing is, it's really start small. You literally just put on your clothes, get in the habit of putting on your running clothes, putting on your running trainers and go outside. And to start off with, literally just run around the block for like a minute and just keep doing that. Build the habit, spend five minutes doing this thing Something that's really helped me because I I'm in a I joined a running club about a year and a half ago was to do just that I, we it was very much like a start small start slow sort of slow and steady mentality and what you find is you just naturally get better you naturally get fitter you naturally get stronger and now this for me this is it's no longer is it like a pain in the ass to do no longer do I think oh, I cannot be asked doing this now. Okay, there's some times where I don't go for whatever work or whatever, but generally now, every week, twice a week, I'll be out with that running club, and and that started small for me, and it just has a knock-on effect of you doing them things, so if we can think about how we can build some, make some habit changes or choice changes, as I said then, we can affect, we can make some positive change in our lives and, you know, tying this into the whole do good stuff and the theme of this podcast, that's that's what this is very much like. The better we can become in ourselves, to empower ourselves, become the best versions of us, we can do more good in the world. I'm very conscious and very focused on my health and well-being. That for me is when I'm in a strong place, I'm in a healthy place and I'm feeling good, that's when I'm going to be more better service for others. It goes both ways. I think sometimes you want to go and do some good or affect something and that makes you feel good as well, definitely. The better healthy habits or choices that we're making each day play a significant role in our lives and improve our lives and the people around us. So, you know, that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So kind of us, you know, recapping on, on a few things. It's like, you know, about how we, we know better, we do better. I found very much through reading and um, writing as well, which I haven't touched on, but I'll talk about that some other time. Listening to audiobooks, going to events, watching documentaries, um, some other things, and just absorbing what I can about the things that I'm passionate about and what I'm interested in. That's the thing that I didn't really get at school. I wasn't really excited or passionate about things. Maybe that was just how I was back then, but I also think actually if we flip the system, if we change things, we made things better, we could get really excited about things and we could really empower ourselves more and our kids and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, by us reading more, absorbing information and by questioning more, um, we can change things. And then us starting to take action in our lives, building uh, better habits and just them small things that can lead to big things. So... Yeah, I'm going to leave it there for today. I have really enjoyed this one, just sort of um, going on. And please give me your feedback. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll include show notes down below so you can check out some of the things that I've spoken about or not. Completely up to you. And if you've enjoyed this, please give me a like, subscribe or share. And if you listen to this on, on Apple or iTunes, if you could leave a review, I would really appreciate that. So anyway, until next time, have a good one. Mm-hmm.